recent news, there have been statements claiming that the new Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine is causing Bell's palsy in individuals. The fact is, 4 out of 21,720 vaccination participants actually suffered from Bell's palsy after their vaccination. However, Pfizer states that this is not because of the vaccine due to the fact that the rate of occurrence in vaccinated individuals seems to be equal to the rate of occurrence in the natural population. While it is hard to establish causation in science and reject one hypothesis and accept another, today we are going to be talking about what Bell's palsy is, whether or not it is reversible, other cases of vaccines we've seen with incidences of Bell's palsy as a side effect, and we're also going to touch a bit on what the Pfizer vaccine is and how it works so we can understand the role it might be playing in the outcome of individuals suffering from Bell's palsy. So if you're new to the channel, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. This is NeuroPsyQ, the best place to increase your neuroscience IQ. Sit tight, stay tuned, let's roll the intro. Welcome back to NeuroPsyQ. I'm glad you're joining me for another episode. Today we are going to be talking about Bell's palsy. Now this might be something you only heard about recently because of the COVID-19 vaccine. However, this is a neurological disorder that has existed for a long time. Now, keep in mind that the rate of occurrence of Bell's palsy in vaccinated individuals seems to be consistent with the rate of occurrence in the general population. Typically, there are about 20 to 30 cases of Bell's palsy per 100,000 people in a population. In the case of the vaccination, we saw four instances of Bell's palsy in a group of 21,720 individuals. So what is Bell's palsy? Bell's palsy is temporary paralysis of facial muscles. Now when we have paralysis of a muscle group, it can be because of injury to the muscle or it can be because injury to the nerve. Now in this case, it is because there is swelling of the facial nerve. The facial nerve is one of 12 cranial nerves. So we're not going to go through all 12 cranial nerves, but what we need to know is that the facial nerve is one of those nerves. In fact, it is number seven. And what happens in Bell's palsy is we have swelling of the facial nerve, usually because of an immune response. And this leads to paralysis of one side of the face, which can lead to drooping, inability to smile with both sides of the face, inability to blink one of the eyes, and other symptoms and signs. So let's take a step back because now there are claims that the COVID-19 vaccine could be causing Bell's palsy. Now, the COVID-19 vaccine that is being implemented and that's being accused of causing this is the BNT162B2 vaccine by Pfizer. So Pfizer had two vaccines they were testing. They had the B1 and the B2 vaccine and everyone seems to be concerned because this is a new type of vaccine. It is an RNA vaccine. The RNA vaccine technology has actually been explored for other viruses. So this type of technology has been explored in the past for other viruses. It's just other vaccines became successful before they developed the technology further. How the RNA vaccine works in a nutshell is that by injecting our body with RNA that codes for a COVID-19 spike protein, our body will use that RNA in our cells to create proteins. It will actually create the spike protein in the COVID-19 virus and our immune system will then develop antibodies that bind to the spike protein, which will help us fight off COVID-19 if you were to catch the virus. So how did this vaccine get developed so quickly? Usually it takes years of testing to get something approved by the FDA. Well, the vaccine is now being used 
via the emergency use authorization that was granted by the FDA based on phase three trial that is ongoing by Pfizer. Now Pfizer does recognize that there are side effects which include reactions at the injection site, fatigue, headache, fever, chills, muscle pain, and joint pain. And this is typical of a vaccination because we are activating our immune system, so it is just like your body is sick, it's being depleted of resources, and you have to fight off this foreign invader. The reasons vaccines work is because we're not actually getting the disease, you're getting something similar to it, so we can make antibodies that will fight it off if we were to contract the virus. So if we look back at Bell's palsy, we said it's swelling of the facial nerve. And typically when we have an immune response, we have inflammation. In fact, with Bell's palsy, although the causes are uncertain, one of the main causes that is listed is viral infection. And so the reason why viral infection is probably influencing Bell's palsy and probably instigating Bell's palsy is because our body undergoes an immune response and that immune response can go into overdrive which can cause swelling of things like nerves and lead to Bell's palsy in this case. Other causes of Bell's palsy include stress and this is because stress can weaken the immune system. This might happen through psychoneuroimmunological interactions. So your psychology influences your nervous system, which can influence your immune system, and that can lead to things like swelling of a nerve and facial droop with Bell's palsy. If the nerve that innervates your face is swollen, then we experience things like weakness or paralysis of the facial muscles. Not because the muscle is damaged, but because the nerve can no longer communicate to the muscle to get it to move. So, this is what causes facial droop, a one-sided smile, and inability to blink one eye. If this goes untreated, of course, the inability to blink can lead to worse issues with your eye as it will get dry, and that can eventually lead to blindness. So if this is something you experience, you need to consult your doctor right away. And on top of that, these symptoms are very similar to symptoms of a stroke. However, it's only in the facial area, whereas a stroke would be more of a full one-sided paralysis because it's happening at a higher level in the brain rather than just one nerve. But you still wanna consult a doctor so you can get it treated right away. So again, we said the symptoms are a rapid onset. Of course, we have the droop because the nerve can no longer communicate with the muscles in the face. That can lead to drooling. It can lead to pain in the jaw or behind the ear. Headaches, loss of taste because the facial nerve also communicates with taste buds on two thirds of the tongue. This can also lead to changes in the amount of tears and saliva you produce. And this can also lead to sensitivity to sound on the side that is affected. The reason why that happens is because the facial nerve actually communicates with these little tiny bones, this tiny muscle. The facial nerve actually innervates a tiny muscle that is attached to one of the small ossicles in your ear. So in our ear, we have these three tiny bones that hit our eardrum and help us hear sound. And when there are very loud sounds, the facial nerve will communicate with that muscle and lessen its reactivity to sound. That way, we don't damage our hearing. But if your facial nerve is paralyzed, then that can no longer happen and so loud noises will remain loud. Luckily, this is mostly temporary because as with swelling of any part of the body, eventually it goes down. So within a few weeks, there should be an improvement. Most people recover in at most six months. It rarely reoccurs, and that's probably just because it's a rare disorder in the first place. It's rare for your facial nerve to swell. Unfortunately though, with some people, it could be long-term and complications would be irreversible damage to the facial nerve, abnormal regrowth of the nerve, which can lead to innervations of different parts of the face and then signals might signal the wrong part of the face, which can influence different facial expressions. And then of course we mentioned dryness of the eye, 
which could lead to problems. Now, this has happened with other vaccines in the past. For instance, one of the most common vaccines that people take is the flu vaccine. And looking from January 2015 to October 2019, one review paper stated that there were 250 cases. Most of the cases occurred in around an age of 45 years old. So this is something we have seen in the past with other vaccinations probably due to the immunological response that is encouraged by a vaccine. Typically, Bell's palsy occurs in people from 15 to 45 years old. The risk is higher if you are pregnant, if you are obese, if you have hypertension or upper respiratory ailments. It's thought to be caused after stress, sleep deprivation, physical trauma, minor illnesses, autoimmune syndromes, or impaired immunity. Again, this can happen with viral infection. This can also happen with existing dormant viral infection. Now, while science says we can't conclude that COVID-19 is causing Bell's palsy, that's a little bit about what Bell's palsy is, since it is something that seems to be very concerning for people in the media nowadays. I hope you learned a little today. Stay healthy and stay safe, everybody. Thanks for watching and thanks for joining us on another episode of NeuroPsyQ. Make sure you share this with your friends if they are concerned about the Bell's Palsy cases. And again, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe so we can keep making more videos for you in the future. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week on NeuroPsyQ.